Fairy Trails Farm and today I'm going to show you how to use an adjustable loom to make mittens. I already made these and washed them. I wanted to see, trying to decide what loom to make the matching hat on is what I was doing. Anyway, so I washed these gloves to see. Also, I wanted to see the amount of shrinkage for the width that I was making. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't making it too small. I was making these for my daughter. So we're going to be using this yarn and this is from Uptown Worsted Tapestry and I think Yule Time. I love this pattern. I think I've used it on some other loom knitting videos, I'm not sure, but so we're going to be making the mitten. I'm using a 60 peg sliding adjustable loom. So I have 25 pegs on each side and 5 pegs on the inner little bits that move around. We will not be adjusting the outside or the one end. We'll only be sliding part and we're going to be sliding it up in order to make the gradual thumb here that goes up and then so I'll be showing you how to do that so I started on for a small to medium woman's hand if you have a larger hand or if you want to make it for men you can adjust it according to your desire the thing is on this loom you might need a larger adjustable loom to get to the bigger sizes I'm gonna I started on so I had 16 pegs when I started. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You want, I set my adjustable loom to 16 pegs to begin with. We'll be bumping it out one at a time. Eventually we'll be bumping it out to five pegs gradually to add that thumb and get that gradual progression into the, the thumb piece on the mitten. If you're bumping it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so the biggest you could really bump this out would be to 19 or 20 pegs, which are going to get you a little bit bigger mitten. This one is like a small to medium, and it looks long because it will shrink. So you're going to start with a bigger product because you're counting on the fact that you're going to eventually wash it and it's going to shrink. So here's what it looks like. I feel like I have pretty large hands for a woman. They're very long. I have very long fingers. This fits well and you can see that here's where my wrist bend is so when I wash this you're probably going to lose two one and a half to two inches and it is going to be narrower now this was a different yarn but this this is after I washed it with the same dimensions as the other one so you will have a little bit of differences because the yarn is different but it's both an acrylic yarn so you can see that there will be some shrinkage I'm guessing that this yarn, because this is a baby yarn, and it was a little bit fluffier than this sort of, which has like a glossy kind of finish on it. So this yarn had more shrinkage than I think this will have, but I'm still anticipating losing at least an inch in length once I wash this. So you, when you make it, you want to, if you think it looks long, that's why, because you're leaving yourself room to wash the product and to allow it still to fit you after you get done washing it because you are going to have shrinkage. That's why the thumb may look a little bit too long because again the thumb the whole product will shrink and you want things to still fit afterwards so it's going to start out looking longer than you think it needs to be so just don't freak out or anything just keep doing it Want the first time you wash it it's going to shrink. And I made a hat to match my mittens. And I'm going to show you how to do the cuff. I had to write down my own instructions here because I, because I, they were a little complicated. I didn't want to forget. So to make the cuff, we want to aim for a, like a one inch long cuff, finished cuff. So in order to make a one inch long cuff, you're going to need to knit for two inches. Now I don't count rows. Some people count rows. I find that tedious. So I do it in inches. So I have this short little 24 inch tape measure that I just keep handy. They make little retractable ones and I just measure things. And after you do it for enough years, you can get it so you can sort of eyeball it. Also an important thing that I do, and I'm sure at some point seamstresses did this in, you know, centuries ago that didn't have access to tape measures and stuff conveniently. My index finger is roughly three inches long. It's a little bigger than three inches. But so when I eye things, I can use my index finger and know that that's three inches. I have know the, the length of just the top digit of my, my index finger is almost exactly an inch long. 
So if you measure your own fingers, you can use those as indicators when you're working with fibers and fabrics so you don't have to pull out that measuring tape all the time. But we want to aim for two inches for our, our cuff. So once you've knitted for two inches, and we're just doing the basic E-wrap, that's all I ever use. I don't do all the fancy stitches. I have found the E-wrap, which I learned as the stock and net stitch back in the 70s. So it now has a different name. It makes sense because it's wrapped like a lowercase e, but so if I slip and call it the stock and net stitch, that's why. So to make the cuff, you want to find that loop that you uh, uh, originally made when you started your your uh, project. Now I'm not going to this is not a video to teach you how to loom knit. I am assuming you know the basic e-wrap stitch and you know the basics of loom knitting when you're this is a this is a more complicated project. So if you are a beginning loom knitter, you want to go back and check out my hat video, the hat video and the sock video before you come and try to do this mitten video. So you're going to lift up your loops and go around and rejoin the end back to each loop in order to make a cuff. And like I said, I am assuming you know how to make a hat, so you should know how to make a simple e-wrapped cuff at this point. If you need more instruction on that, please check out that hat video. But it's fairly simple. You just find those original loops. Here's the original loop. You want to lift it up and over the corresponding peg. Sometimes it helps to hold it out and stretch it a little bit. Okay, so now you can see that I have the bottom corresponding loops are now on here. So now I can go around and when I begin knitting this, it's going to attach the cuff to the rest of the mitten here. Oops. Okay, so I've got the cuff done. You can see it there. So the next thing I want to do, so I'm going to be knitting for five more inches and it, when I rejoin you, I will have this much done. It's going to be five inches including the, the one inch cuff. So I'm going to be knitting for approximately four more inches and it's not an exact science. So, you know, you want to keep knitting and measure it every so often. Like I said, I use my index finger three inches is there, so I know I need to know about two more inches. So I'm going to go knit that, and when I come back, we're going to start the gradual bumping out and widening of the loom, and I'm going to show you how we're going to make that thumb, and then we'll finish the product. And I loom knitted my, we say it was approximately five inches, so it matched my other glove. What I always do when I knit one if I'm knitting a pair of something socks, I'll use the other one to compare it to. So sometimes that requires me, you know, altering the plan because I just want it to match. But I did the approximately five to six inches here. And you can see we have the cuff and we have the hand or the wrist part of the glove forming here. And now we're going to start doing that gradually graduating thumb. We were working on that, remember, 16 pegs on each side. So how do we get that graduating thumb? Now this is the part where I actually use a little pad of paper and I write things down because I don't want to... Uh, it's okay if you mess up like one or two rows. I mean, it's it's flexible. I mean, so it's not, like I said, it's not... I've said this before, it's like not rocket science. You have to be exact, but you want it to be as exact as possible. So we've started out on 16 pegs. The next thing we're going to do is, since it's a sliding adjustable loom, is I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to pop it out one peg and I'm going to tighten it out again. First of all, I'm going to go all the way around once. And now, since we have these corner pegs that haven't been used, so I'm going to have to go twice on those. So let's go all the way around. I'm going to hit that corner peg that I just bumped out. So I'm going to go twice 
on it. Go all the way around. This is regular, like just like normal. And then I'm going to go all the way around again. Now it will be a little tight. So you just slowly do that over your peg. Let's go all the way around here. Again, on the corners, it's going to be a little tight, so just be very gentle with it. Wiggle it over. Now I'm going to go all the way around a second time. Okay, on that same peg, now I'm going to go around two more times. So when we popped it out to the 17th peg, so to speak, you're going to go around four times. So I'm going to go around two more times. So what we're going to be doing is a succession of, we're going to pop it out one, two, three, four times, which we will go around the entire mitt four times. So this is the first peg we've popped out. And this is the third time I'm going around here. Now I'm going to go around for the fourth time. So we, we're still, we've still only popped it out one peg. And then we're going around four times. So this is my fourth row around. And then we're going, after I get done knitting this row, we're going to pop that peg out again. So now we're going to pop the peg out again. So now we'll be on peg 18. Push it to 18. Tighten it back up. Do the same thing. We're going to remember it on the corners. You're going to do it twice. For that first time. And we're just going to do this. We're going to do four rows again. So this is our first row of the four. So I've done my, I went around my second row. So you might want to get a lined piece of paper and do four lines. Out one, out one, out one, out one. And then every time you're going to go on each one of those out one, you're going to pop your peg out and you're going to go around four times. So then you can put your little slash marks by the next one and then you can go pop your peg out and do another slash mark. Some of you might be wondering, does it leave a hole? You know, because we have to do the, we have to put that on those corners we have to do it twice and no it doesn't leave a hole so here's where here's what's happening and you can start to see let me see if I can get it at a good angle so here's the side of our our, our uh, mitten where we're popping things out and you can sort of see I hope you can see it on here that it starts forming like almost a V it starts changing and going a little bit of a different direction there I don't know if you can see that real good, but you can start seeing it about right here. It starts doing a different little thing. The ribs start going at a slant because we're popping that out one by one. And it doesn't leave a hole. As you can see, there's no hole there where our corners are, where we're having to do the extra little loop. It all fits in right. So... Right, out one, out one, out one, out one. And remember we were on, assuming we're going to say that we were on 16 pegs, we're just going to use the one side for our guide. So you're going to pop out two, we've put, popped out two. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
14, 15, 16 is where we started. Now we've popped out twice to 18. So then you're going to go to 19 and you're going to go to 20. And all the way to 20, you're going to keep popping out and you're going to go around four times. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then when I come back, we're going to start something slightly different because we're going to start forming the actual thumb part. And there's going to have to be a gap between the thumb and the body of the mitten. So what we're going to be working on after you get go do your out, out one, out one, out one, out one, the four, the, the four pop outs, four rows around each. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start learning how to do this dividing part here to separate our thumb from the body of the mitten. Right. So I have knitted the four out, the one out, four around, out one, four around, out one, four around, out one, four around. So we've, we've moved it out four. So now we are on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's where we started. And then we did one out, four around, one out, four around, one out, four around, one out, four around, and now we are on peg 20. All right, now we are going to move it out one more time. And this time, we want to go around twice. Same thing we always did, two around on the corners. So we can have enough to do our looming on. Go around one more time. And then I'm going to go ahead and loom that, loom knit this all the way around. Okay, so now we have this part, so it's up to here. So now we need to start working on the thumb. So what we want to do is go back to peg 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And I made a mark on my thing there. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to knit back to there. I'm going to do those three. Okay, now, we want to leave a gap between 17 and 16. So we're going to go all the way around this end part here. Two peg 17 on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So, and we're going to stop. We're not going to go over here. We are going to just do this end from 17 on this side to 17 on this side, just this end, and we're going to do 19 rows. So, I have a little piece of paper, it says 19 rows, and I'm just, every time I start a row, I'm just going to put a dot. So let's do a couple together so you can get the idea of what we're doing. Okay, push that down. I'm back over here on this 17, I'm going to just reverse, and I'm going to go back the other way. to peg 17 again. Go ahead and put your dot. And like I said, if you do an extra row or under a row, it's going to be okay. My third row. My third dot there. Reverse. Back around. As you do this, you're going to start to notice the gap widening between 
16 and 17. You're not joining it. You're not joining peg 17 back to 16. You're leaving a gap. You're reversing. You're knitting. You're reversing. You're knitting. And you're going to do that for 19 rows. So I'm going to go finish the thumb for the rest of my rows. And then we'll come back when I've done my 19 rows. And I will show you what it's looking like. And I will show you how we're going to go over and finish the rest of the mitten. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to finish the mitten. I'm on row four. I'll be back soon. So I finished the 19 rows. And you can see inside the loom, let me see if I can get it, it's hard to see if you can see. Uh, you can see there's like a gap forming here on each side where we didn't connect it. We did not connect peg 17 and 16. We left a gap there. And you can see how the thumb, the side of the thumb is starting to shape here. And we got that whole thumb in there. So what we're going to do next You want to leave yourself about, I don't know, a little bit, 12 to 18 inches of yarn. And you're going to need your needle. And we're just going to remove just the thumb from the loom here. I like to keep my finger on the peg that's coming up just so nothing slips off. Because you can salvage it, but it gets it's difficult sometimes and sometimes it just becomes a mess so just the thumb portion okay and your thumb will come off there and you can see it, it is a thumb <laughs> so we're going to cinch the top of that thumb just like that, pull on it. And I'm going to stitch a few stitches here. And I'm going to stitch a few stitches through the very top of that cinching part to, just to keep it there. Okay. And for right now, I'm just going to leave that yarn over there. So. We have we cut that thread, so now we have the thread over here. I'm gonna do it like you are starting a new project. You're gonna make a little loop. And you're gonna put that on your loom. And you're gonna start on that peg 16 right here that we didn't finish. And this time we are going to go around the opposite part that we haven't been working on and you're going to stop there at that peg 16 and you're going to loom knit it around and we'll be reversing just like we did on the thumb only we're going to be just using this wider end down here that we're now making the top part the part where all your fingers go and we're going to be knitting I'm not remember I'm not going to do rows this time around you're going to be knitting again for another five approximately five inches so you're just going to do round and round let me show you, I just reverse it. Let me finish this one here. Reverse it, and we're going to go back where we came from. And you're going to keep doing that just like you were doing with the thumb, back and forth, back and forth. And you're going to periodically stop so you can measure and when you get approximately five inches 
it's better to have a little bit more than five inches than under because we're going to cinch the top of the mitten and that's going to take up some of your knitted fabric. So if you have to err, err on having a little bit more than the five inches. So I'm going to go do my five inches in knitting and when I come back we will look at how we're going to take this off the loom and how we're going to finish our mitten. All right, I have finished the top part of the mitten. As you can see, and I think I might have gotten a little ex over exuberant and might be ran a little long, but that's okay. We'll uh, cinch it up and remember once we wash it, it shrinks too. So there's always some losing some stuff there. So I'm going to leave generous amount of yarn here. And I'm going to switch over to a my long needle and we're going to take this off the loom and then I'm going to show you how we're going to um, take care of forming the rest of the mitten. So I'm just going to take it off the loom like normal. We will be cinching this up, so make sure that you're, when you're removing it, you're removing it like a drawstring and you're not making it so you can't pull it and cinch it up here. There. Here's what we have. We have a thumb and we have the top of the mitten. So we're going to cinch that up. And you want to work on that so it's not, you don't want it as totally since you want it like a, to lay as flat as possible there. Okay, and I'm just going to do a few stitches at the top here. And then we're going to turn it inside out and we're going to stitch the inside. Let's get this top part taken care of first. This is why you want to leave yourself ample yarn when you cut it off. Okay, just go ahead and poke that needle inside. And let's turn our mitten inside out. Push it up in there and your top of your mitten, turn it inside out. So what are we going to do about this big hole? That's what we're going to be sewing closed. And we want to do that inside out so that when we turn it back right side out, uh, you don't see the seam. So we have our needle that we poke back in. So just whip stitch your way to the end. Or I should say to the opening, not to the end, I'm sorry. Whip stitch your way to the opening. Okay, you can pin this if you want. Generally doesn't need it though. Just roll those edges flat as possible. Just, the best way is just to pinch it as you go along. close to the edge as possible because when you turn it back uh, right side out you don't want to have like a big uh, gathered sort of mess at the, at the seam. You want it to lay as flat as possible. So if you stay as close to that edge you won't have that problem. I'm not going to need this extra yarn that we left on the thumb so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. 
the reason why you leave that there is in the event that you don't leave enough yarn when you stop the top of the mitten, uh, you can, instead of having to tie a knot, you can just go back, thread your needle on the opposite end and use that yarn that you left. So it's just sort of like a backup in case you need it. But I have an ample amount of yarn, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, so I'm just going to whip stitch. When I get down here where the thumb, sort of that little dip is, I'm just going to do a couple of stitches because that's an area that's going to take a lot of movement when your thumb's moving and stretching of the knitted fabric. So a few extra stitches will just be, make it a little bit more secure so you don't get a hole there. And I'm just going to continue to whip stitch right up that thumb. A few stitches at the top, even though I've already stitched that. I'm just going to do that for a little bit of added security. Make a few extra stitches just to really anchor that yarn. And cut. to turn it right side out. Okay, when you get it turn right it right side out, you just sort of squish that seam there, get it flat. It wasn't too far off. I did it looks like I did about a half inch too long. I felt when I was doing it I was like I should stop and then I went a couple uh, more rows, so it's not too bad. It is a little bit off, about an inch, <laughs> inch and a half. But like I said, it will shrink, and so when it's you know shrunk, you won't be able to tell the difference. So there are our mittens. So this has been Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm with the how to make a mitten on an adjustable sock loom. If you found this project to be as fun as I do, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>